Aol, Shalom, Rastafari, Senbet Salam, Shabbat Shalom. Let's get right into this particular teaching, but we're going to make a, say a word for the 23rd. The 23rd of um, this month, of the month of July, for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings, the Son of Man Day. We call that the Son of Man, Lij Tefari. That's when that Son of Man, as per revelation and the ancient prophecy concerning that particular man-child that was born in Ijasa Gora, Ethiopia. A word for the 23rd. And I give thanks to Logical, to I and I brothers and sisters in the, in the, in the Cali community, what we call the, the kibbutz, the kibbutz in Cali and the, and the farming community. Um, more is coming forward on those brothers and sisters or sisters and brothers as well as other brothers and sisters here and there. But the main thing that we want to um, actually remind um, the eyes them on, and we took a couple of notes, give thanks to um, Echite Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Sister Emmanuel, and to the logical community and to the, to the, um, to the elves or the children, the youths. Um Salam Tana Ainayist Alin and once again Betam Teru on the Fidels. The, some of the liquid youths. I heard them on on one of the call conferences and the reasons we had they were chanting the Fidels. Because you know it says that the youth a youth shall leave a small child shall leave them. Of course that particular prophecy is concerning Lij Tefari. Now let me see if I have a, a eye tray. You know, you know who I and I is speaking of. His Imperial Majesty. You understand the Son of Man. And I don't know if I have um, an eye tray. You understand an eye tray that's um, actually um, handy. Hold on for one moment. Yes, I. I should have brought this in from before. This is some some old um, printout copies of some of our leaders, and this is some of the teaching, kind of the teaching um, tools. Some from Dr. York, some from different works. Some this is York's right here. Some of it is ours. Some of our drawings, some maps. Of course, you know this is a slave ship. You know, old pirate. Yes, they rob I. Some of the clothing from some of the years ago, the sistren for the sisterhood. You know what I'm saying? But be that as it may, I think I have a picture here of Lij Tefari, of Lij Tefari, because that's what the 23rd of July, we often say it's His Majesty's birthday. And in, and in the world, and for, for those who are maybe not fully mature in the mystery of the King of Kings and His Christ, yes, it's Haile Selassie, the first birthday for but for us as the sons and daughters and the mature and the maturing sons and daughters of the King of Kings and his Christ it's the son of man day the son of man day. here we go here's the idea this is actually an enlargement an enlargement from um, here we go right here this is an enlargement let's get a close-up enlargement from one of I and I first Bibles right here so the 23rd of July, right, is the Son of Man Day. This is the Son of the Man Child Day. You understand? Oh, the Man Child Birthday. Yes, Haile Selassie the first Earth Day. You understand? Or as ones would say, from a more seclorum, a secular, worldly perspective, not being in the mystery of God and His Christ, it is Haile Selassie the first birthday, but we have to understand who this man-child is according to prophecy. And um, the witness witness of the stars is very, very important. That's that new scroll and manuscript that by the grace of His Majesty and His Christ we were able to publish. And we had noted, we actually made a revision to it because when we went over the copy we saw a certain area then we said, this is why. You know, when you see some books and you have certain books that you know are important and, you know, you're dealing with a lot of research and study, sometimes you might 
um, not forget, but you might not recall as you should some of the information contained in there. You might have a book and, you know, then you remember, oh, this is the reason why. You know what I'm saying? So we made a revision, and in our introductory notes or introduction, we actually go into that particular book, which actually explains from a a a Christian perspective. It's E. W. Bullinger's book, who this man child is, and it was actually speaking about the return of Christ. So when Christ returned, would these same celestial and heavenly signs? Would this be the manifestation? In other words, would there be these same celestial and heavenly signs? Now, witnessing the stars actually proves that 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 in 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 um in 1892 there there were these particular signs now those of you who who may be familiar with um catch a fire um the book catch a fire i don't recall uh, timothy white i think timothy white is the author catch a fire there's that first chapter right and in fact john woolen we might in the grace of his mercy publish that first chapter as a little mini pocket book if you haven't checked it out, you need to check out that first chapter of Timothy White's Catch a Fire. It's called Kingdom Come. And there, in there was the, one of the first times that we became familiar with the fact that from the Ethiopia perspective, it was known to those of that generation, you understand, that there would be this special child who would be born in Ethiopia. But before that, there was a drought, and there were celestial and heavenly signs that many ancient um, uh, astronomers or astrologers, if you please, but those who had faith in God and his Christ, not those who were worshiping false gods, but who recognized that the heavens are for signs and seasons and days and years according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. So July 23rd, right? July 23rd more properly is the Son of Man Day. And this is, a, this is one of I and I favorite, one of the many, but this is one of the early favorite eye traits, as we would say, of His Imperial Majesty because His Majesty does not have any poor traits. Right? He don't have no poor traits. You understand the word sound and power? All right. Some of the younger Rasta men might not get it just yet, but meditate on it. His majesty don't have poor traits. That's why we say eye traits, because English is a very funny um, language, and it's, and it's a strange language right? Um, to us. This is why we have to get into our pure language. We have to master it first. You understand in order to break those 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 ancient psychological um, spells. You understand? Because the spells, how do you spell it? The word, sound, and power. Now, speaking of the word for the 23rd, or July 23rd, which will be the 120th, you understand? The 120, the 120th um, Earth Strong of Lich Teferi, Lich Teferi Mekonen, or some would say Lich Tefari Makonen, more correctly, Lich Teferi Mekonen, right, of the man child. Now, it is I and I holy culture and tradition, you understand, to, to, to celebrate this man child. Why? Because of that prophetic word. So, we're saying to beat the drum. All of I and I should 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 beat the drum, you know, um, for this particular day. The the negarit. It's called the negarit, or it's called the talking drum. You understand? Um, it's it's a message. You understand that heartbeat? Do good, do good, do good. And if you don't have a drum, some might say, "But oh, wow, the twenty third is almost here. I, I don't have a drum." It's still the heartbeat. You understand? So when we are in that, that, that peace of Yeshua, as Yeshua said, peace he, he, he gives to I and I. It's his peace. And not, not like the world gives it, but it's his shalom. Shalom. His, his shalom that he gives to I and I. And this also very much connects with this Torah portion. Finihas or finhas or um, 
um, Phineas, according to the, the, the Anglo, the Eurocentric Phineas, or if you see it in the Hebrew, written now in the English, it's like P-I-N-C-H-A-S. It's not Pinchas, even though there is an artist named Pinchas. I don't know if there's any connection right there, but really it is Pinchas, Pinchas. And it's a very interesting, this is why I want to get into that particular Torah portion, but we first wanted to give this word, right, this word for the 23rd, since it will be soon, soon upon I, and I think there's probably another light, as it were, you'll send before, by the time we get this posted up there, hopefully you ones will have at least enough time to meditate this message and to headrest with, with, with Jah, with Jah in Joshua, in Yeshua, in spirit and in truth on how exactly they would honor, you understand, and celebrate. When we say to celebrate, Bamarinya is to honor, to cause to be honored. How will this day, which is the 120th, now you have to remember that the 120, and we talked about this with the Abba Kedus Mishtir, or the mystery of Abba Kedus, that this would be the hundred and twentieth, if you check those vids, this would be the hundred and twentieth um hundred and twentieth uh memorial, metasebia, you know, remembrance. It's for us not to be forgetful. So even if you don't have the drums to beat, still you have to be in that heartbeat. You see, if we have Yeshua's you will send Yeshua's peace then our heart beats correctly because as Yeshua says to us, let not, make not your heart be troubled. You know what I'm saying? There's a very important teaching on peace that I was meditating for a while because we say shalom. And one might say shalom. But what does shalom mean? What does shalom mean? What's the real meaning? Shalom at its root meaning it refers to health. This is one of the reasons why among the holy Ethiopians, it is often said and has been said more in the past than it is today, Taina yist alin. In other words, may God give you health. Taina. Taina. Shalom refers to Taina in original in, in the original sense of the Hebrew. So in the Hebrew if we were to say Mashlomek, Ma Shalom Ha, you understand know like in other words, how are you doing? It's taken in translation. To be, how are you doing, mashlomech, mashlomcha? But really, what it means is, is, is how is your health? Are you living holy? Are you living holistically? You know, so when we say peace be unto you, shalom lekem, shalom lekem. In other words, peace be unto all of you, shalom lekem. It's saying, saying health, holisticness. And see, this is the very root of the Rastafari, the true Rastafari revelation. This is why within the Rastafari liberty, there's a focus on health. You know what I'm saying? On health and on, on healing and on holisticness. Because it comes from that very root of shalom. You know what I'm saying? Or salam. Now, we're going to get into some of that in a little bit more, more detail, but it's just important to touch on that right here, right now. You understand? Know As we say a word for July 23rd concerning the King of Kings, his earth strong, or more properly, more prophetically, the earth strong of Lij Teferi, the Son of Man Day, the Man Child Day. This is the man-child day, July 23rd. You understand? So what's the significance of this? Well, let's first of all go to the beginning, because how can we understand the so-called ending, even the ending of Babylon and this present dispensation, if we don't understand, well, how did it all begin? Many talk about, well, how is it all going to end? Well, if you don't know how it all began, or how it all began, then how are you going to know? how it all ends. It's like reading the end of a book and think that you understand the story. Then You can't understand the story as it were like that. So let's go to um, Genesis, right? Genesis. Some say the genealogy of Isis, but the orit ze, ze fitret, orit ze lidet, or in the Hebrew, berashit, right? 
chapter 6. Chapter 6. And it came to pass, this is concerning the flood. Remember Yeshua said that as it was in the days of Noah, and days of Noah, you know what I'm saying? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Yovis, it so shall it be. And this is the time that it, that it becomes. So I think it's significant when we speak about Abba Kedus, right? When we speak about um, I and I, Holy Father, when we speak about the King of Kings and His Christ, let us recognize that this is the 120th. Yovis in the 120th. Yovis. And some will say, well, this was the child, but really we're speaking about the old man. No, we're speaking about the triune God. You know what I'm saying? That's why there are, are three um, manifestations that the Father uses as a child, as the servant, or as Rastafari, you know what I'm saying? And as the old man, the ancient of days. You know what I'm saying? Now, it is very important for us to start with, you know, start with the word. So let's start with this word right here, and this is concerning the flood. The flood in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 to, to, to chapter 8, verse 19. We're not going to go through that, but that's just the flood. If you want to get into it, you have your Schofield reference, check it out. But this is the marriage of the Canaanites, the Canaanites, right? The Canaanites with the Sethites. It was the marriage of the Canaanites with the Sethites. Now, it's important to understand this distinction even in this particular Torah portion, the 41st Torah portion, Finihas or Finhas. Right? To understand this link that's going on right here. Even, in other words, the Sethites were the holy children, but the Canaanites were the unholy ones. In other words, the Sethites were the ones who were doing Jah's will and Jah's way, while the Canaanites were doing whatever they want to do. They were doing as they will. You know what I'm saying? But as far as racial type, they both were for lack of a better expression, black or were Ethiopian or, you know, African in type. So at this time, we don't have this. This is what we have to look at it spiritually. You know what I'm saying? We have to be able to discern the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't like there was a difference of the racial type at this particular point of prophecy. So, and it came to pass when men, humanity, human beings, began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters, daughter, 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 daughters were born to them. So men began to multiply. Human beings began to increase. And what happened? And there were daughters that were born to these men. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fear, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now, I know there's a lot of different interpretations and speculations, so forth and so on, but we're coming from our Ethiopic root and our Ethiopic truth. And this is why we have to insert this into the um, exhibit. You understand? Exhibit A. This is the Gedla Adam. The Gedla Adam or the conflict of Adam against Satan. It's from the Ethiopic book of Adam and Eve and accordingly translated by Reverend S.C. Milan. S.C. Milan. And we have reprinted this and this is available this is in, in English. It's a translation right here. But it's a pretty good translation from some of the original um, texts and portions of the manuscripts which we have consulted with and checked it out. Because, you know, um, when we recommend a translation, we're not just recommending it because it's the only thing out there. You know, if we do, we'll let you know that we're not too sure about the translation, but it's a pretty good and a pretty accurate translation. We would say as good as, or in some ways better than, even the present translation we have of the so-called King James Bible. But, you know, we start with what we got, you know, and we continue to make, make heights or make heights. So some interpret this that, that the Son of God was some um, Anunnaki aliens and such and such. And some of y'all might believe that because y'all are believers. You know, somebody says that. But if you do your own study, have you done your study from the Ethiopic manuscripts and resources? You understand? You, you really have to recognize there is a reason for the season. You understand that, that we, and the opportunity that we have to study and to show I and I ourselves approved. So according to this understanding, it was not some extraterrestrial, so to speak, you understand, at this particular point, but it actually was that the two parts of the family, the godly part and the ungodly part, 
had intermingled. Now, you know, whenever you get such a thing, you're going to have a short circuit. That's why it says, be ye not, um, you know, unequally yoked. You know saying, with unbelievers. This is, this is where that unequal yoke came in because the sons of God or the children of God, the Sethites, you know what I'm saying, saw the daughters, you know what I'm saying, of, of men, of men to say on the lower level because they live like men, you know, like we as Rastafari say, Jah made man and man make men, and men is a confusion. You know what I'm saying? So the Canaanites were the confused. But the sons of God now looked upon the beauty of these daughters, similar to what happens in the, to the Israelites in the sin of um, the al Peor or the al Fegor, the Lord of the opening. Well, what kind of opening is it? You know, the mature can overstand, right? Anyway, it says that he took wives of all that they chose. So, and, and they chose, obviously, not according to spiritual intellect or, or anything like that, or one's love of God and love of truth, but they chose according to physical attributes and physical beauty and what delighted the senses and the eyes, so forth and so on. But there's a warning of Yahweh. You know, because John says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. You know what I'm saying? So shall it be in the end of this, of this age. And see, the whole 2012, December 21st, 2012, this is symbolic of the coming to the end of an age. It's like a, a significant, um, it, you know, it's like, it's like the point on the clock. You remember those old clocks and those old movies and those old houses of, of European and white folks? Where when it, when it's, the clock hits twelve, out comes a cuckoo, 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 cuckoo. Well, this is this is where we're at right now, in, in creation. It might sound a little bit funny, but there's a seriousness to it. But it's like when that clock hits twelve, you understand? You, you know, all craziness begins to to kind of come out, and and we can see that we we gradually are approaching a time like this. We're not saying that December twenty first. 2012 is that time. We're saying we're in that dispensation now. You know, saying we are we are in that point. We're coming to that particular hour. We're in that space of time. So we have to, or we should, if we know what is good for us in this life and the life to come, get prepared. You understand? Get prepared. And for those who aren't born again, you gotta. That's the initiation to be born again. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to have a change of mind, to recognize the Christ of His Majesty, Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? Our black Lord and Savior and His Word, the words of life. Because remember, heaven and earth are going to, you know, heaven and earth will fade away. But His words will not. So, so, so what are you to rest upon when all the heavens and the earth go out of, go out of course? You understand? It has been prophesied there would be days like these, the times of great tribulation, such as never have occurred on earth before and never will. You understand? It's that word. And being in that word and that word being in I and I gives us sustained ability. You understand? Gives us sustained ability because his word is life. You know, so we have true life in us, and we walk in that true life and that true light. Now, John gave a warning. There's a warning of, of Yahweh, he who is who he is. And Yahweh, he who is who he is, the king of kings said, My spirit, my spirit, what it says, shall not always strive, shall not always strive with man. For that he... That particular he also is flesh. Remember what his match says, I am mortal, I am man. Yovas. Yet his days, right, I will produce his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Yet his days shall be, all right, his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Let's see if we have, I think we have a, you all know the Abba Caduce, um, the mystic eye trait. Of Abba Kedus. Well, um, let us see if we have it right here. Just for those who might not have seen it, who are we speaking about? We're speaking about the living majesty. We're speaking about his imperial majesty, Abba Kedus. You understand? His days, right? Abba Kedus. You see that right there? His days, Abba Kedus, 2012 and 2012. Well, here we're at. 
And then you can see from ancient Egypt, you can see the sign right there from ancient Egypt. Let's get a little light. Let's that be light. Okay, here we go. All right, this is from a CD. You know what I'm saying? Uh, kind of an introduction to meditation and the reasoning. That's Abba Kedus right there. His majesty not dead. You understand? Know but even if they want to say so, he is that one in Revelation. He who was dead, then behold, he lived and he lived for evermore. But this particular day is significant. You know what I'm saying? This particular day and this particular time. Because it's a significant memorial. And, well, what are we memorializing? You know, it's what is... What is to be remembered? It's the birth of the Son of Man. You understand? It's the birth of the child of humanity. This is what of Lij Teferi. You understand? That man child spoken of in Revelation. Right? Now, it goes on to say that there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, Nosso says, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men, men which were of the Kedem. They were of the Kadmon, the Kedem of old, men of renown. If you read this in the Hebrew, in the Masoretic, um, in the Torah, you'll see that the renown mean men of the Shem. They were men of Hashem. They were men of the name, right? They were men of the name. Now, at that, at that very day and time, there were also the wicked in the earth, too. This is exactly what we have. Some have called this the sons of light versus the sons of darkness. You understand? Or Rastafari light versus so-called Lucifer, uh, the dark night or the dark light rising. You understand? We have this clash. It's like some are becoming more, more godly and, and more... More, more kind and more generous and more true and more faithful. And some are becoming more evil. And it's like we have these two extremes in the earth in this very time because we are in a prophetic space and time. Well, let's get to um, Revelation for a moment. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation reveals the truth. Right? Revolution, right? A lot of people are talking about revolution too, right? Well, let's touch on this right here. Now, here is Revelation chapter 12. Chapter 12, 2012, all right? Chapter 12. Now, it says seven personages. It says the woman. The woman is Israel. But this woman is symbolic of Kedistin Gilmarium, of our black mother. You know, the mother of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know, saying that Jesus Christos, Ketachin, right? Adonenu, our Lord, you know, saying, or our Master. So we no longer call no man Masa. You understand? He's our Master. He's our Lord, if you please. No more Lords of London or counterfeit Lords or whitewash. Nah, give that to the heathen and the sheep, and they can worship their Baals. But for us, the true and living God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So the woman symbolically is Israel. But in this dispensation, that woman is Ethiopia. You know, and that woman now is Ethiopia. We showed this on some of the, on some of the other um, information before, right? Um, you might see it out there. We showed this on some of the other information before where we show when you look at the map, let me put this down for a moment, when you look at the map of Africa, right? In fact, don't we have the map of Africa right here? Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's look at the map of Africa. Notice something. Notice something right there. You see, this is this is this thing, the Mardium, right? And the child, you see the position? You see the position? Right? You see what side the child is on? Now look at this right here. This is the map of Africa, and here's Ethiopia. You see Ethiopia in that same position? So now you see this right here? You, you, I mean, are you able to overstand that right there? You understand? Even that, in that, is a sign, right? And, 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 and a signet. It's significant. You understand? So now we have this in the scriptures. We can get into that a little bit more, but want to just get this word out as soon as possible since the 23rd will be here shortly. So it's a word for the 23rd, for July 23rd. So the woman is now clothed with the sun, right? 13 months, right? right? This is it, 13 months of how much? 13 months of sunshine. That is Ethiopia, 
Ethiopia, ancient Tobia, 13 months of sunshine. So she is clothed with the sun, right? She is clothed with the S-U-N, the Sahai. She is clothed with the sun and, it says, and the man-child. She is clothed with the sun and the man-child. So symbolically, right, symbolically, according to our holiest symbols or icons, as it says, or the iconography, it is the the mother, the black mother, and the child. The black mother and the child. Now, when we look at this now from, from a heavenly perspective, notice when we look at this from a heavenly perspective, we have Ethiopia on that very same on in that very same relationship. You see that? In that very same relationship. You see the horn of Africa? You see that horn right there? The overs? All right. Okay, you got that? All right, we'll go into that a little bit more, right, Ja Willen. So let's now just deal with this so we can prove and show the scriptural proof that this day, July 23rd, is the son of man or the man-child day, that, that, that child that was born. Now, if you want to get it from a Christian perspective, along with the signs, the heavenly signs, you need to check out the book that we reprinted and published, and that is The Witness of the Stars. You can check it out on our website, um, www.lojsociety.org. Click on the books, the books link and look for Witness of the Stars. So here it begins, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in the heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, one of the, um, I think is the Bobo brethren, um, Priest Isaacs, he had a, a lecture um, presentation where he was showing it from the, you know, from the heavenly, you understand, the heavenly perspective, in other words, what what witness of the stars speaks of some of the modern um, astron astronomical programs? You actually can see these things in real time, where it reconstructs the movement of the heavens, so forth and so on. So we're coming into so this is we have to understand that this was the perspective, you understand, of the ancients. They understood these things that man or the modern man, the European, you understand, and those who follow him in this Gentile world dominion are just beginning to overstand these things right before the so-called time of the end, because all this was prophesied. John says in the latter days, we would understand these things perfectly. And now we're in these latter days, and many of us who seek his word and truth and life are beginning more and more perfectly to really overstand, right? Now it says, and she being with child, she being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Now, those who want to study this, go into a little more detail of this. It's interesting when you compare the basic theme, you know, the basic theme of this particular, the rhema, this is a rhema word in this as well, the particular theme of this with um, St. John chapter 16, chapter 16. L let me read a little bit of John chapter 16 um, um, to you. 16 and 16, Yeshua speaks of his death. We're speaking of the Son now, or God the Son, resurrection and the second advent. So Yeshua is speaking of his death as the Son, his resurrection, and what's often been called his second advent or the second coming. You, all right, the second coming or the return of the Moshiach, right, the black Messiah. It says, a little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. So the Son is now going to the Father, right? Then said some of his disciples among themselves, you know, instead of asking the Master, head wrestling with John, we, we were asking ourselves, right? They said among themselves, remember, he's right there, but they're asking themselves, what is this that he saith to us, to I and I? A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. What's so curious about this? 
is that you really read this and understand this in the like like as a play in a sense. You know, if this has to be brought out so that ones can this word brought to life, the dead word of the scripture brought to living word, and you under understand this in a living way, they only focus on the part. What does this mean that he says a little while? They only thought about this idea of a little while. Not, not, not the fact that you're going to see me, not see me, I go to the Father. That didn't really bother them so much. But the, the little while, they're saying we cannot tell what he says. Like how long, basically. How long, how long, O oh Lord, O oh faithful and true. Verse 19, now Yeshua knew. He knew. He had gnosis. You know what I'm saying? That they were desirous, that they, they wanted, right, they were dotted, in a sense, they, they, were, they were desirous to ask him and said to them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while, and ye shall not see me? And again, a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, amen, amen, I say to you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Now notice it's verse 21. John chapter 16, verse 21. And this is concerning the, the, the man-child. You know what I'm saying? The day of the man-child. The birth of the man-child. July 23rd, 1892. It says right here, a woman... When she is in travail, has sorrow. In other words, a woman, when she is about to give birth, it's, I, I, I don't know personally, but I've seen that women who have given birth, they, you know, they, they're going through, you know, it's experience. They explain, ask a woman who has given birth, and she'll probably tell you if, if you don't know already. But it says a woman, when she is in travail, like to ask your mama, right, if you can, has sorrow because her hour is come. Her hour, the time is come, right? The time is, is come. The water has broken. The time has come. But as soon, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, as soon as the child comes, comes forward, right, comes through that birthing canal, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man or the man child is born into the world, is born into the world. This is the man child that, that Yeshua is speaking of, Lij Teferi. Now, one will say, well, how can you say he's speaking of his majesty, of Halas Selassie, of Lij Teferi? Oh, that can't be so. Well, what does the word say? The word tells us what is so. And the evidence that we have, you understand, proves what the word says to be true. Right? It says, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. This is why so many questions came to his majesty. We recognize, uh, Rastafari, we recognize that that was Christ, and that is Christ in his kingly character. But, that, but people were saying that, oh, the acts of majesty, the Rastas think you're Christ, so forth and so on. And, and his majesty did not, did, not, um, did not deny that. Even in the, in, the, in the interview that some people who obviously are hard of hearing or something, they have a mental block, they can't really understand that. His majesty, yes, I've heard of this idea and I've spoken to some Rastafarians, and he's speaking about a theological point the so-called emanation philosophy. He's basically saying, don't get caught up in that new age-ism. You know what I'm saying? Don't get caught up in their form, in the Gentile form of the new age-ism. That's what His Majesty was saying in that interview. But a lot of folks don't really, don't really want to get it because they want to say His Majesty denied His divinity. No way in there he says, no, 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 don't call me Christ. I'm not Christ. I'm not. He could have, but he did not. He said, yes, I've heard of this idea, and I've seen some Rastafarians. You understand? And I said, don't make a mistake of pretending or assuming that man is emanated from a deity. You understand? I'm a man, I'm mortal, I'll be replaced by the oncoming generation. Yes, that oncoming generation is I and I, right? Is Rastafari. You understand? Is the once lost but now found beta Israel. It's I and I that is that oncoming generation. And he's given additional word to us too, if you're interested. 
you understand? I mean, concerning concerning who we are, concerning his divinity, concerning his relationship with the Son, the Father, and the Son in the Holy Spirit is one, the triune God. It's, it's very clear to those who receive the truth and have a love of the truth. But people who just want to just be deniers, they'll deny, you know, they'll deny the surest evidence. It says, and now ye therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice. Did we not have sorrow for 400 plus years? What's so interesting is the, the idea of the birth, of a woman giving birth. Because, you know, when the woman's hour has come, what's the first thing that happens? That water breaks. But even after the water breaks, the baby just don't boop, come out generally speaking, there's still a process to go through. And she has great sorrow. And he said that we're going to have sorrow too. You understand? Know we have had that sorrow for 400 plus years. From 1492, right, and Christopher Colombo, you know what I'm saying, Columbus, to 1892, and the birth of that man-child, the birth of Lich Teferi, of Ras Teferi, of Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, of Haile Selassie the first, July 23rd, the reason for the season, right? All right, so he says right here, he says, and your joy no man taketh, no man taketh from you. You know how they always try to take Ras Teferi joy? Rasta, your God is dead, you know, Salachi, so not God, because, you know, and, and Rastafari, they can't take on that joy for those of us who are rooted and grounded on the truth. We still are rejoicing. We still are giving God thanks and praises. You understand? And more evidence and proof is coming out every day. You understand? So, be that as it may, Christ goes on to say, and in that day ye shall ask me nothing. This is why I say when, when, when they were asking his majesty, are you Christ? And there's many other instances when they were saying it matches Christ and ones were turning to him like, oh, the Rasta say you're Christ. And Matthew just looked at them. There's a couple of instances he just looked at them. It was the priest who basically jumped up and said um, in other occasions, not that Canada interview, but other occasions and said even the um, – uh, I think during during the mission, the 61 mission, but there's other witnesses of this. The, the priest would come up and say, oh, his majesty, a religious man, and he's a very holy man, and he's such and such. But his majesty himself said nothing. He said nothing to that. You understand? Even on certain occasions, he says, well, why not? You understand? Well, why should they not? You understand? He didn't say, yes, I am such and such like a like a like a faker, like yes, I'm 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 God, I'm blah, blah, blah. no, he didn't. He said, why should not? He said, leave them alone. Who am I to disturb their faith? You know, saying they don't like those those evidences. That's why you don't see them talk about it a lot on their blame Hala Selassie, the first crowd groups and stuff like that. But here he says that that our joy, so sorrow is done. All that sorry, sorry, sorry. No, nah, that's done. We have to even prune our speech from saying all this sorry, sorry, sorry. You know how people say as like a, like a guilty reflex. Oh, I'm sorry. You understand? Well, if we're born again, no, he's taking away that sorrow and grief. He, he bore. He bore. Yeshua bore that. You know, so we can have that joy and let, let not thy heart. You understand? Let not thy do good. Do good. Let not thy heart be troubled so, so that's beating erratically. You understand? Because that is your life. You understand? And that it, it, he, he is our peace. You understand? It's his truth. It's the truth of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, of the one God, of the true God, of the triune God, that is I and I peace, is I and I victory, is I and I overcoming in a time like these, like this. Right? So he says, in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, amen, amen, I say to you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father. Notice this. Christ is saying whatsoever we would ask in that day and that time, the day and the time of the revelation of Lich Teferi, the revelation of Christ in his kingly character, of Kedamawi, Haile Selassie. What does he say? He says in that day and that time we shall ask him what? Nothing. But now get this. Get what Christ says right here. He says, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father. So in that day, it's not God the Son, Yeshua, but it is now God the Father, even the Father of, of, of holy Africa, of modern but holy Africa. 
is Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin. It says, in that day, right, we shall ask him nothing. Verily, verily, I say to you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. So the proper approach to the King of Kings in his visitation would have been to ask his majesty in the name of Geta Chini Jesus Christos, just as it is for us in this time of revelation. Right? He says, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father, Abba, in my name, in Yeshua's name, in Jesus Christos' name, he will give it to you. Right? Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. So before that, the disciples did not ask anything in Yeshua's name. Ask and ye shall receive, ye shall Kabbalah, Kabbalah, that your joy, that our joy may be full. So if right now if we're not rejoicing as Rastafari, if you're not feeling that joy, perhaps you're not in the proper order of His Majesty's arrangements. And perhaps you need to get your, your house, you understand, in order. The, the faith, it's so much a spiritual house, you understand, in in order. It says, these things have I spoken to you in proverbs, in proverbs, in parables, in misales, in mishles, in, in verbal hieroglyphs, or, or even in myths or metaphors. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak to you in proverbs, but I shall shew you, I shall shew you, I shall show to you plainly, Yeshua is saying, of the Father. He shall show us plainly of the Father, of Abba Kedus, of Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, of Ainai, Godfather, and King of Kings, in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. So we see that His Majesty didn't really speak a bunch of parables, but He spoke directly and plainly until the, uh, until the philosophy which hold one race superior to another. You know, He spoke directly. You understand? Directly and straightforwardly. And even when He spoke to the nations, he was not ashamed to declare his salvation, to declare Jesus Christos. And you'll find that also in the word as one of the signs of the second advent. So Rastafari in spirit and in truth is correct. You understand? Whether all of them are able to explicate it from the scripture, this is the goal of I and I. You understand? So we can be uh, true witnesses and faithful witnesses to his word. Not just our feelings and thoughts, but we will find it in his word according to the scripture as it is written. Right? All right. At that day, ye shall ask in my name. In that day, we're going to ask in whose name? In Yeshua's name. Not in the name of Selassie, but in the name of Jesus Christos. And I say not to you that I will pray the Father for you. He's saying in that day of his revelation of himself. You understand? That he's saying, I'm not going to ask the Father. He's not going to ask the Father as he did as the Son. You understand? Because now the presence of the Father has made himself known and has made himself manifest in these latter days and times. And God has shown his salvation. He has visited every nation. You understand? And we're coming to the fulfillment of this age. For the Father himself loveth you because you have loved me. So why does Haile Selassie, why does Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin, why does he love us? He loves us because we have loved Jesus Christos. And if we do not love Yeshua HaMoshiach, guess what? Father and I love you. All right? And have believed or have trusted, we have confidence, admittance that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and am coming to the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, Lo, look, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. Now they already thought that that day had come. You have to understand. They're saying, now you're speaking plainly. Is he really, was he really speaking plainly? They thought they understood. You understand? But this is, shows us how we are while we're still growing up. You know what I'm saying? Now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe, by this we trust, by this we admit that thou camest forth from God. Now notice what Yeshua says in verse 31 to prove I and I interpretation of this. Yes, who says, answered, answered them, do you now trust, do you now admit my men, amen, 
falsely translated here, believe, but really, do you now trust? Do, do you now really admit? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Even then the Father is with him. So when we see his majesty, you know, when we see the Father, we see the Son. Yeshua is with him and is within him. You understand? Know in spirit, in truth, in word, and in deed. See, that's part of the mystery. It speaks about Hawari Apollos. He speaks about the mystery of God and Christ. The mystery of God and Christ. There's a mystery. You know, understand? Something that is that is is so enigmatic. The tri how is the triune God the one God? You know, people still are people still are confusing themselves instead of accepting, admitting, and trusting the word and the revelation of I and I Rastafari. But if they choose, if they if they bruise, if they lose, our role and responsibility in the spirit of Christ, in the love of God, in the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is to present it. You understand? So that if they will, you understand they may be saved. All right? Behold the hour cometh, yea is now come that I shall be that ye shall be scattered, that y'all shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father Abba is with me. Verse 33, to complete the chapter, These things I have spoken to you, that in me ye might have peace. In who? In Yeshua we will have peace. In Jesus Christos, in the Christ of his majesty, do we have peace. Right? In the world, in the worldlid, right? Ye shall have tribulation. So we have trouble in the world. The world is full of <laughs> enough expletive deleted, deleted, right? But he says, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. So he's also counseling. See, here's where it gets spiritual. Here's where it gets metaphysical. You know what I'm saying? Because he's telling us this is what it is, but be of good cheer. He's not to make us of good cheer. We have to guard our heart. We have to guard our thought. You know what I'm saying? We have to be of good cheer. It's like David when David, um, when 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 they had when David's two wives were taken kidnapped and everybody else's wives and and even the children were taken kidnapped and they wanted to stone David. You know, in the book of Samuel, David was very distressed. But the Bible says that he strengthened himself. He strengthened himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in Jah. You have to strengthen yourself. But the word, this is word powered. You know what I'm saying? So the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You know what I'm saying? With that word in your heart, in your mind, in your consciousness, you overcome, you know what I'm saying, both forces visible and invisible because they cannot overcome the word of truth. What they try to do is make you doubt the word and say, oh, that's the Bible. That's not really real. That's not evolution. You understand? <laughs> yeah. But Christ says, these things have I spoken to you that in me, that in I, ye might have shalom. In I, you will have shalom. In the world, you shall have tribulation, trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He has already overcome this. This, this whole system is already over. Babylon already is fallen. You know what I'm saying? But... We have not submitted and conformed ourselves, so maybe translated that power of Yeshua through us. You know what I'm saying? Because we are the body, right, of Christ, the church. You know what I'm saying? So all those things can be put under Christ's feet, and that means be put under the true church, even the church of the new name, the church of Ras Tesari. Now, to, to, to connect this right here with the Son of Man Day, July 23rd, right? The Son of Man Day, otherwise known as Haile Selassie, the first birthday, which is interesting because it's the 120th. Remember we began off in, in Genesis, where we said we got to go to the beginning. Then we went to the end, but then we said, wait, before we fulfill this in, the, in Revelation, we have to go to Yeshua to the words of Yeshua, the, the te to remember this connection here with, with this child, right? It says, and she, this woman, right, this woman that was clothed with the son, right, which, which um, commentators say is Israel, but we say it's holy Ethiopia. It's holy, not, not, this, not what's going on right now. 
You understand what's going on now is apostasy. It's a falling away. But we're speaking about holy Ethiopia. Holy Ethiopia will be restored. All right? But the woman here, in this particular time, circa 1892, the woman was clothed with the sun and the moon was under her feet. Notice what it says about the She's clothed with the sun because the sun is Christ. The sun is a symbol of Christos, even the Cherui, you understand? Or from ancient mysteries, the Horus or Christ. But the moon now is under her what? Her feet. What is the moon? Who has the moon as a symbology? You understand them in Islamism. You understand the same ones which are mentioned in um, Psalm 83. The moon is under her feet. That was under her feet. Now it's really trying to get over her head because of the apostasy because they fell away from the king. Now the enemies are all around Ethiopia and all within Ethiopia because she has apostated herself. She must repent. There must be an Ethiopian repentance before there can be a true renaissance. Renaissance means born again. You have to repent before the new birth. You have to have a change of mind before you can be born again. You're not born again, and then you have a change of mind. That's backward. You understand? That's out of order. That's not in his order. So it says right here, the moon was under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. What are these 12 stars? These 12 stars are symbolic of the 12 tribe of the Beta Israel. So these 12 stars, she wore that as a diadem, as a crown, because according to Kevr Neges, so the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, it says that, that, the, that the kingdom of David was renewed in Ethiopia. Thus David prophesied the way he did. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. Amen, amen. We're seeing this all fulfilled. Verse 2 says, and she being, this woman now, being with child, being with child, she cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. You see the connection with John chapter 16? Now, here introduced now, Satan now comes in the picture. Now, it's interesting in Lid Tefari's story, in the Son of Man story, what's very interesting is, is how, the, how the papacy, how Rome, the so-called Catholics, so-called Roman Catholics, so-called Christians, how they invaded Ethiopia, how Italy invaded Ethiopia around this very same time, four years later. You remember? It's similar to what happened when Christ, the Son, Yeshua, was born, and how we have a, about two or so years later the massacre of the innocents, the same thing we have occurring after the birth of the Son of Man. And here in verse 3, it says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, another sign, right, the witness in the stars. Behold, a great red dragon, a great red dracos, zendo, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. That dragon. So when we see coming up to 1892, we see how the Europeans were dividing, the Goyan were dividing and conquering Africa. And the only place that they were not able to overcome was Obia or was, bring this in again as a demonstration, was Ethiopia. They wasn't able to overcome Ethiopia, right, at this particular prophetic time. But they were circling, you know what I'm saying, like sharks. They were circling Africa, and they had conquered so much of this region right around here, all right? So now we're seeing this prophecy now unfolding. Now, even the third part of the stars, if there were 12 stars, what's a third of those 12 stars? There's four stars. It's interesting that we can clearly identify, you understand, at least four tribes, you understand, even in this region. One, Judah, the so-called African-American Negro. Two, Benjamin, the so-called Jamaican and other West Indians. Three, um, Levi, you understand, the so-called Haitian. And then we have Don in a very interesting way, Don. 
because we have the Donna Colina, you know, like the Buffalo Soldier or the Maroon, because you have to remember, remember who the Donites were, you know what I'm saying, and how they were attached, you know what I'm saying, how they were attached to Judah, you know what I'm saying, in a very interesting way. So we have the Buffalo Soldier in America, and then we have the Maroons. This does not exclude, you know what I'm saying, the other remnant tribes, you understand that are in this particular region, and we will go into that as some of the Hebrew Israelites have also given an overview to that in their particular teachings, right? Because we found the truth wherever we find the truth, and it's verifiable truth. Truth is truth, all right? So the, the dragon was waiting to devour this man-child, you understand, this man-child, the man-child, as soon as he was born. You understand? And she brought forth a man-child, right? She brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now get this part. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Well, where's God and where's God's throne? Now some would spiritualize and say that God's throne is so much he went up to heaven or something like that in the sky. No. He was caught up to God. In other words, it's interesting when his imperial majesty says that when he was christened, I, I, if I'm correct, when he was christened, it's like everything he said became clear in the universe. It's almost like a new spirit, you know what I'm saying, that's caught up to God. It's like he was focused, it seems like, a, you know, like a youth that was focused on one purpose. It's like he was always, even from this age, it's like he was al al already a man. Though he were a child, he was already a man-child. You know what I'm saying? You do not get this holy consistency in the life unless this is the work of Jah, unless it's the work of God. So it says, and the woman fled into the wilderness. Symbolically, Ethiopia was cut off for these thousands of years, 3,000 or so years, right, into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God because God had already prepared Ethiopia even from the very beginning. That's why we have Ethiopia in the Bible in the very beginning, all right, where she hath a place prepared of God. Remember when Christ says, I go to do what? I go to prepare a place for you that where I am ye may be also, all right, where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there. Now get this. Wait for it. A thousand two hundred and three score days. So we have one thousand two hundred and sixty days. Now in the prophetics, this is one thousand two hundred and sixty years. Now when you look at that time and the womb, right? The womb that when talk about the beast um, being wounded, right? Being wounded and speaking about the mystery, the other mystery in the scripture, the mystery of iniquity, the Roman Catholic Church, the, the Lateran Treaty, the Lateran Treaty that was signed by Benito Mussolini and, and Victor Emmanuel and the Pope that restored the Pope to a kingship. This took place in, what was that? That was eight, that was 19, um, I think it was 1929. His Majesty became King Negustafari, if I'm correct, in 1928, and then he became King of Kings in 1930. So those are very prophetic dates on both sides of it. Both we see Ethiopia, and then we see Satan signs as well. So we see God signs in the earth and Satan signs as well. And then it goes on to say that, and there was war in heaven. You see what we're talking about. Ethiopia had a place prepared for it. And then along comes Mussolini, the fascists. First they came in the Battle of Ottawa, got beat. Then they prepared with weapons of mass destruction and came back again circa 1936, uh, 35, 36. But officially we could say it began 36, right? So there was war in heaven. Mikael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Now, all we see on the earthly level is fascist Italy invading Ethiopia. But we're not able to perceive what's happening on the heavenly level. Understand this, on the higher heavenly level, as above, so below. All right, but they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the old dragon, 
was cast out. That old serpent called Diablos and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. So the whole world has been deceived by Caesar Bogiers, by the whitewashed Jesus. The whole world has been deceived by counterfeit Christianity. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Now, this is the rise of the Rastafari movement, right? In the early 1930s, seeing the visible signs of the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, the power of his anointed, all right? For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God, Day and night, because Satan's position in the heavenly court is like the prosecutor. The position of Yeshua, the son, is as your advocate or defense attorney. And the position of God, the father, is the judge. So before Satan can do anything, like in the book of Job, he has to get a warrant. He has to go get a warrant. And the courts establish the judge, well, you can do this, but you can't do this, so forth and so on, right? And then you have the defense that would bring forward an argument in one's defense. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you do this pro se, <laughs> if you understand. Um, verse 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood, right? And they overcame him by what? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of testimony. By the word, the word of testimony. Not they was talking about, yeah, I have problems and nobody can solve them. No, by the word of the testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? And by the blood of the Lamb of God. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives to the death. And, and so we see this in the character of His Majesty and that, and that blameless generation. You know what I'm saying? So many of them were martyred in that particular time concerning the fascist invasion. They did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Heaven rejoice, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for Diablos, the devil, has come down to you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Isn't this interesting? When we look at this particular time, the coming of his imperial majesty, and just look at this one here. You can download this one, the two sons. This is one of my and I brethren, um, Issachar. Issachar did this one right here some years ago. I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him in a while. But notice this right here. You turn this up so you see Yeshua, the father. This kind of explains some of the mystery of the father and the son. The father and the son is one the King of Kings, and his Christ. You understand that right there? The Father and the Son is one. And so my ancient Ethiopic iconography, iconography um, right here, one more time. You overs, but this is the position right now. The King has come. You overs, I will, and I will. Yes, I. Yes, I. So um, let's get into this. The, this is